I literally said, I got the one on the left. You go, I got right, and then boom. My deer See, went. when you chalked yours, you had a better shot. You, you double long yours. If I am any significant distance from the truck or there's any terrain between me and the truck, I'm just going to quarter it. Our first hunt together was 10 years ago this year. That's kind of cool. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Got my buddy Drew here. Oh, man, we've been, gosh, how long have we been friends for? Like, I think it's been 16 years, something like that. Yeah. It's been a, been a long time. We grew up racing motocross together. We also grew up hunting together. We're just trying to share as many hunting stories as we can with you guys to show why it's so important to journal your experiences so that you can pass them down to future generations and learn from what you're uh, what you're learning in the field when you're out hunting or fishing or anything that we do here at Mountain Country Outdoors. So let me introduce my buddy Drew Fordyce. What's going on, man? What are you working on these days? Oh, not much, guys. You know, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to be on the show with you guys. You know, I'm very, you know, very busy. I already run three businesses of my own. I run a recruiting business, I'm, you know, life insurance agent as well. And then I work a full-time job in the telecommunication side. But, you know, I try to squeeze in hunts every now and then as I can, you know, try to keep myself updated. Right on, man. But uh, this was my first deer. It was your second deer. And it was our first, first and only so far double kill, right? Oh, yeah. So how I, old were we when we did those hunts? Well, I want to say when we did that hunt, we were only 13. I think you were 12. I, I was 13 because the year before I was 12 and I hunted with you guys, but we didn't get anything. We missed out on that one nice buck because I had the 30-30. Oh, yep. I do remember that. Yeah. But yeah, I was 14 then. Man, we were just kind of doing it ourselves, right? Yeah, we, my mom was with us and then my aunt, but my aunt... um my aunt, um, my mom was sick, and then my uh, my aunt had like a broken foot or something. So they they just sat in the car. They just drove us there. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember, uh, man, I wish I had this in a journal. It'd be so cool. But I just remember going out there to our our area. We don't need to say the area or anything, but we went out <laughs> to the area, and um, we're just driving along, glassing, getting on top of ridge lines and stuff, just doing what we'd been taught up to that point. Just go out and look for deer. I think we just spotted these deer right right up on a hill, right? They had to be, I don't know, 400 yards from the road. It was something like that. Yeah, we were glassing from, you know, across the draw, some at the peak of the hill. So we started to stalk them up there. And obviously we were kids, didn't walk very fast. So they were kind of grazing up and over the hill, which, you know, granted that was a long walk for us at the time, which... You know, come to think of our hunting stories, you usually don't plan things out in the best route for, you know, the aftermath of getting oh, no. that thing back. Oh, no. We uh, we shoot first and uh, figure out how to get it out later. <laughs> yeah. But, it's uh, probably a big downfall. Yeah. I, I We're learning. We're learning. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, man. So we spotted these deer and we went stalking. And I think we got to the bottom of the hill. They were on the top of the hill. But we weren't going to shoot at the skyline because we were responsible young hunters. <laughs> and, yeah. and so we waited for him to drop down the other side of the hill. And then we were like, all right, as soon as they drop down over that hill, we're running to the top of it. And we didn't even know if they were bucks or does. We couldn't tell because it's not like we had good binoculars or anything with us. I think we knew be, before that point, we might have known there was a buck in there. But we get up to the hill and we're glassing down there 300 yards away down at the bottom of that hill and we're like oh crap i'm shooting a seven ram mag i think you had a 25 out six right no it was a 308 so yeah drew posted up on a rock what like 20 yards to the right of me yeah something like that and uh i just i think i went prone with the bipod uh guessed just totally guessed as to where i was supposed to aim i didn't really know and we didn't plan it this way we didn't we'd never thought okay we might both get to shoot deer at the same time but there were two forkies there was like six deer and two of them were bucks and so drew and i got in the scope i literally said i got the one on the left you go i got right and then boom and it was one of the most just like perfectly aligned moments in history. Like the subtlety of supposed to be in quiet during hunting was not the case. You know, we were yelling, I got the one on the right. And, you know, deer just looked straight up. 
oh, and yeah. when we pulled the trigger it was almost damn near in sync it was boom boom yeah one yeah. right after the other just so man that was such a cool hunt and such a cool first deer for me because we did it all on our own and uh that's one of the things i've been like thinking about lately is you know taking just taking it upon myself to learn hunting really and finding friends and stuff to do it you know for me it's a good calming experience you know kind of reset you know kind of ground yourself back to the earth and you know be in touch with yourself yeah yeah that's what it's all about man uh so that's well i guess there's a little more to that story right we had to get them out so my deer See, went... when you chalk yours you had a better shot you, you double lung yours and yours ran like 75 yards away from where we were we couldn't find mine at first because we walked past it to get to yours and we were in a panic trying to look for mine but mine went like 10 feet from where i shot it because i shot it in the back it was not a very good shot i take upon that young hunter yeah i broke yeah. its bag and he dropped right where he was at we just straight up walked past because it was between sagebrush it just buried there yeah yeah it was good field dressed him out and then we had we drug mine back to drew's field dress drew's and then we 13 and 14 years old we had to get these two mule deer 300 yards straight uphill note to self to us to get to the car we were probably about a mile and a half away from the car in order for us to get them back so we still had a 300 you know vertical climb plus another mile down the hill yeah i mean i'll take the mile down the hill over the vertical climb any day that was, yeah. so i just I, remember us standing there we couldn't carry one by ourselves so you grab two back legs you grab the front and it just turned into one two three lift move a couple feet set it down we were there all damn day yeah well i remember we tried to drag it up with the truck that didn't work the ropes kept <laughs> breaking off because the rocks were cutting them because it was too vertical and yeah, like Drew said, we were just, I had the back legs or the front or whatever we did, and we would step above the deer on the hill and then go one, two, three, lift, lift the deer up to us, walk up, one, two, three, lift. And we had to do that with two mule deer all the way up this hill. Uh, so we learned our lesson there, but something that I've definitely learned since then is like, if I am any significant distance from the truck or there's any terrain between me and the truck, I'm just going to quarter it. <laughs> yeah i wish there was something we knew at the time we had no idea i think we did because i feel like one of them we quartered two of their legs out just to make it lighter for us to get oh, the other one up that was the next story that was the next story i couldn't remember which one that was see, see this, this is why you need a hunting journal guys this is exactly you why you need yeah. a hunting journal man yeah this was over 10 years ago for us now uh, it's right at 10 years for me it'll be 10 years this fall because i'm turning 23 so i guess this is our first hunt together was 10 years ago this year. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I know. It's been a decade since our first hunt. That's, that's insane to think about. Or at least our first kill. It's been 11 since our first hunt because we hunted that year before. Yep, yep. But, uh, man, that's crazy. The years go by, and I'm telling you guys, even if you're young like me, like the hunting stories from a couple of years ago, I can still remember them pretty well. But there's times when we were telling that story where I was like, man, I – I wish we had pictures too. And, and we probably did have pictures, but they're all digital and, and it's like, Oh, I'm going to have these pictures forever. They're in the cloud or whatever. You don't know what could happen. And man, if you've got a mount like that hanging on the wall, like I have a journal to go with that elk. So my, my kids and stuff will, and grandkids will know exactly what went into that elk. But man, I wish we, we had a good artifact of these stories, but let's get into this next yeah. one. This, this one's a funny story. 